Hello, hi, and what's up, Bantai? So, I've been loving exploring more of California this past year, and Joshua Tree was no exception. I always thought I was just prone to beach her case, but my recent trip to Joshua Tree National Park surely surprised me. Who knew I could love the desert oh so much? Our trip to Joshua Tree National Park was filled with all the superlatives you could think of. Kind of weird, pretty wacky, super strange, and all kinds of amazing. We spent our one day in Joshua Tree admiring the wacky trees, climbing up huge rocks, watching the climbers, and heading to the highest point in the park for sunset. And we just had a blast. The park is famous for its starry night skies and surreal geographical features. You shouldn't miss those either. We had planned this trip months ahead, but still on the day of the trip, the weather was just trippy and we were very anxious about it. But still, we decided to go. And then, till around 5 to 6-ish, there were clouds, but after 7, they started to clear up. The sky was very moody that day. Around 11 to 12, we noticed so many stars up there. We had to capture the Milky Way anyhow. So during the night, we moved around four different locations to get a good view. Finally, at 2 a.m., we saw it. We saw the Milky Way. There is a long list of things that to be undertaken if you badly want to see the Milky Way. Like visiting on a new moon day. If you want more tips about this, just drop a comment below and I'll make a separate video about it. Thankfully, Joshua trees are pretty straightforward and easy to get around park, so you can see the main highlights in a day or even less than that if you plan well. Joshua trees are a true symbol of the Mojave Desert and one of the only places in the world you can see these spiky leaved evergreens. It's a true desert wilderness. There's a reason why 2.8 million people visit this park every year. And with that being said, there's no restaurants, lodging, gas, or even grocery stores within the park. So you 100% need to prepare ahead. This park is so large that it spans two desert ecosystems, the Mojave and the Colorado. Not many people know this. <laughs> I sure didn't. I had to read about it. So the Mojave Desert is the higher and cooler of the two and where you'll find the highest concentration of Joshua trees. But what's a Joshua tree anyways? Joshua trees are spiny and twisted tree-like plants that are native to the Mojave Desert. They sure look like something straight out of a Dr. Sayers book, right? They're a surprising sight in the middle of the arid desert environment. But get this, despite their name, Joshua trees aren't actually trees at all. They are in fact the succulents and they are actually part of the agave family the plant used to make tequila. Who knew? These wacky plants are an important part of the ecosystem of the desert. Lots of the birds, mammals, insects and even lizards live here. Although Joshua trees look pretty tough and indestructible, they are in fact pretty fragile. Do your absolute best to not touch them and never hang on them, lean on them or anything else for photos. While Joshua trees are a good indication that you are in the Mojave Desert, they are also found in the Sonoran Desert in western Arizona or in the San Bernardino Mountains, which are mixed with pines usually. Planning a day trip to Joshua Tree Where is Joshua Tree National Park? So this park 
is located in Southern California, kind of smack dab between a bunch of major cities. This makes it easily accessible from a whole bunch of spots. You can drive here within a few hours from basically anywhere in SoCal or even from Las Vegas or Phoenix. It is approximately one hour from Palm Springs, one hour from Orange County, and two hours from LA, two and a half hour from San Diego, three hours from Phoenix, Arizona, three hours from Las Vegas, and around four hours from the Death Valley National Park. We took a day trip to Joshua Tree from Orange County and thankfully we didn't encounter much traffic. We did, however, need to wait about 30 minutes in um, the entrance to get into the park. The line was over a half mile long. Once we got closer to the beginning of the line, we were directed into a separate shorter line uh, since we have the national park passes. So thankfully saved a bit of time there. If you're planning on visiting at least two other national parks within the next 12 months, it's definitely worth it to invest in the national parks pass. It's only $80 for a year. The fees adds up quickly. So for uh, this park, I suggest leaving as early as possible, no matter where you are coming from, especially if you are basing yourself out of LA or the Orange County area. If you're visiting from further afield, you will need to fly in. Thankfully, there's a bunch of airports within the driving distance. So what about the weather and when do you visit it? I highly recommend planning your day trip to Joshua Tree in either spring or fall. May to March and October to November are when the temps are most comfortable. With an average height of about 85 degrees Celsius, like the Death Valley National Park. It's just too damn hot in the summer months. It's about 100 degree Fahrenheit, which is not uncommon. No matter what the season is, it cools down significantly at night, so dressing in layers is key. So how to get around driving in Joshua Tree? You will definitely need a car in order to get around on your day trip to Joshua Tree. Unlike other parks, there is no shuttle or bus system to take you from one stop to another. Driving around yourself is the only way. Thankfully, it's um, hard to get super lost since there's only like two main roads through the park, the Park Boulevard and the Pinto Basin Road. Despite the easy navigation, please watch your speed. Unfortunately, threatened desert tortoises have been killed by speeding cars. We drove around Joshua Tree and then stopped at different attractions. You don't really need a rugged vehicle if you just want to see the main hotspots of the park since the main park roads are paved. Off-roading isn't allowed anyways as it can trample vegetation and disturb the desert wildlife. Note that there is no gas station in Joshua Tree, so I recommend coming with a full tank of gas. We filled up before we left from Orange County and had more than enough fuel to get back there um, for the next day. Joshua Tree has three main entrances, each with their own visitor center which are the west or the main entrance, the north entrance also known as the oasis visitor center and the south entrance also known as the cottonwood visitor center. You can also find guided tours in Joshua Tree if you would feel more comfortable having someone else do the driving or just want a more relaxing day. There's a few day tours you can sign up for in advance. Most even bring water and snacks for you. A special note on water. Bring a lot of water. Like a lot. Way more than you think you'll need or want. I'm not kidding. When I say you need to bring at least one gallon of water per person per day. 
the desert gets absolutely scorching midday and most campgrounds don't even have any water to refill your water bottle other things um that i feel are important such as what to bring and where to be prepared in the desert slather on that sunscreen the sun is strong over here and on that note i always like to take along some spf lip balm to protect my lips as well keep your eye protected from the sun with a white brimmed hat and sunglasses like i said the desert sun is powerful a picnic lunch with some salty snacks helps your body replace electrolytes that you lose from sweating at least 1 gallon of water per person per day as i said before uh try to wear loose fitting slightly colored clothing shorts hiking boots or sneakers would work a first aid kit is always necessary when you are out in the middle of the desert with limited facilities carry a headlamp or uh, two different uh, lamps that would help you as a flashlight or take you around for the toilets or anywhere else you want to go at the night if you plan to do any sunset hikes or go stargazing it would help there as well then you would preferably need a red light for a uh, stargazing at that time now about the entrance fees uh the normal vehicle entrance fees is around $30 motorcycle entrance fees would be around $25 and individual entrance fees would be $15 per person on foot or on bike all entrance fees give you a 7 day permit to enter and leave so you can always come back and explore more if you live nearby There is also a Joshua Tree National Park annual pass which is more than worth uh, and it is around $55 for the entire year. There is no or very limited cell services in the majority of the park so definitely pick up a map at the visitor center before entering the park. You should not expect to uh, rely on your cell phone entirely. If you like my video don't forget to like share and subscribe for more.